Draw FM at 99.9 HD2. All right, Rudy joins us on the right Twitter guest line. Talk some football. And Rudy, as the combine has now completed, I'm just your, your thoughts on the interview process. Does it hurt a player for not doing the interview? And I'm specifically talking about maybe Harrison, if that is a problem for these guys to not have the interview. Did he not do the interview process or did he just not do the media portion? Um, I, I, I obviously was at the combine and so I didn't get a chance Me- to like really keep up with every bit of news. Sure. It's the media. He didn't do the media. Um, well, I think that's a good question. I mean, I, I, I personally don't think that, um, it's, it's, uh, gonna hurt him. Um, he's such an incredible player and he's such an incredible talent. And I don't think that, that the media session and him not doing it is going to impact him or impact his draft status. But it's like anything else. Try to call him back. Um, Hey, uh, we're going to call him right back. Let's try to get a better line uh, with Rudy Carpenter. So he's going to join us here in a minute. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, I would have liked to have seen him. I mean, you don't get to see a lot of these college guys, and the only chance you have is is the media to give them the, you know, give us the the fans a taste of of, of these guys and who they are. Yeah, I, I, I would have liked to have seen them. Yeah, I think the other side of that is too is it, it's part of the process. If you're there and you've got a chance to talk to the media and, and share a lot of things you want to share, then so be it. The other thing that was interesting was that Caleb Williams uh, only wanted to do physicals for those teams interested. He didn't want to do a full-blown physical there at the combine, which I thought was interesting because that goes to every team. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I'm like, well, okay, if you don't do it now, uh, you're going to do your your physical for those selected teams. Rudy, I think you were were getting into reference with Rock's question about is it vitally important that a lot of these top athletes coming out speak to the media? Yeah, look, I, I think everything's really based on who you are. If you're a really great player like Marvin Harrison, I don't think it matters. If you're a guy that's on the bubble of being drafted, I think it's a big problem. Um, and unfortunately, um, the NFL, that's just how it works. We've heard Jimmy Johnson talk about it. He's not going to treat all players the same. He's going to treat an undrafted free agent much differently than he's going to treat Michael Irvin. And that's just how it goes. So, for Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels and Marvin Harrison Jr. not doing certain things, do I think it's going to impact their draft status? I don't. Um, but for a guy that's a less caliber player, it probably would hurt him. The other thing, Trudy, is interesting. We were just talking about Caleb Williams not wanting to do physicals unless there are teams interested. So, you know, I think the top 10 teams might be interested depending on their quarterback situation. But then also not working out at the combine, looking to make his pro day a workout day. Now folks are going, well, is, is he looking to be a problem child? Is he a diva? Uh, is there drama surrounding him? And I kind of sort of laugh when I see that. But when you see some of the rhetoric that's following him since his last year at USC, I just want to get your thoughts about him in reference to overall these last couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, look, as you guys know, my thought process is, I think, much differently. I'm definitely not of the old guard thought process or the old guard mentality. With that being said, um, I think Caleb Williams has done some dumb stuff. You know, I'm painting his fingernails that says F Notre Dame and and just some of the weird attention grabbing stuff that he's done throughout the course of the last year. A lot of the media visibility, his dad coming out and saying a bunch of stuff. I think a lot of that is really ridiculous. On the business side, though, I got to be honest with you. I I don't know why. I told you guys this before. I don't know why players participate in the combine. Back in the day, the NFL combine used to be about medical history and medical history only with interviews. They have turned this thing into a spectacle. They are selling tickets to the combine. The stadium was half full. I was there. I was in there. I mean, the NFL is making a lot of money off of this event. Everybody's making money off of this event except for the players. Very rarely, it's why I don't understand from a quarterback standpoint, you heard him talk about it uh, live on the broadcast, there's no quarterbacks that are going to go in there and throw the ball great at the combine, and that's going to impact their draft status. It's not. Throwing the ball well at the combine is not going to impact your draft status whatsoever. And if that's the case, why do it? 
Now, the other argument is, well, if it doesn't affect your draft status, don't compete and do it. Why? Why? Why put anything bad on tape anywhere? I don't understand that. This is a business where, in this time of the year, for all these NFL teams, they're trying to knock every player down as much as they can to justify paying them less. If I'm Caleb Williams or all of these guys, I think their answer is right. Look, you have 30, 40, 50 games. Three. Some of these college kids now play 12 years in college. Bo and Nick have like 70 <laughs> games you can go yeah. watch. Yeah. So go watch the film. Go watch the film. Why does it matter what how I throw the ball to combine or how fast my velocity is? With that being said, like I tell our prospects, it is incredibly important you go through the medical process yeah. and pass that medical process of flying colors and don't get called back in a few weeks to Indianapolis to be a part of the medical recheck group. The medical part, very important. And if I'm a player, I would want to interview with teams. I would want to show teams my football IQ. I would want to show football teams how much I love the game. I would want to show teams my personality. So those two things, the medical and the team interviews, are things that I think players should want to participate in. The underwear Olympics, to me, is a waste of time. Two. Um, and and all that other stuff is, a, is, is, to me, just a waste of time. Rudy Carpenter is our guest on the Toyota Guest Line, right Toyota Guest Line. Rudy, how did your clients do in what you were just discussing? Yeah, we had Johnny Wilson there, and I'm sure if you guys paid attention, he got some play. Johnny Wilson went to the combine. He had the longest wingspan in NFL history at the combine. He measured in at 6'6 and 3'8, 235 pounds, and his official 40 time was 4'5'2. I got a text from a bunch of teams, about 10 or 11 teams. Everybody had him clocked at somewhere between 4'5'3 and 4'4'9 handheld. So for a guy that's Six six and three eight, two hundred and thirty five pounds. He crushed it. He has ten eight broad jump and a thirty seven inch vertical. So this obviously this this him showing up has got to have helped him. I would think, Rudy. One minute. Well, I think for him, um, the important thing for him was number one the medical, and basically everybody that I spoke to at the combine, they all thought he was going to run in the four six range. At 4.52, he was a little disappointed because he's been testing in the 4.4 range, 4.46, 4.48. He was a little frustrated. He thought he was going to run faster um, than he did. But like I told him, everybody's expectations for a guy that's 6'6", 3'8", 235 pounds was somewhere in the 4.6 area. So him running low 4.5, you know, was incredibly impressive and people were, you know, really in awe about that. Had he tested the tight end group, he would have been by far, you know, the, with the best numbers of that entire group. Rudy, as always, man, thanks for joining us on Monday. We appreciate it. Have a great week. Yeah, no problem, guys. Take care. That's Rudy Carpenter joining us, breaking it all down. Yeah, he's Six player did pretty well there. I'd six six so. six six two thirty five running a four four to four five six. That's incredible. for a big kid like that. Yeah, and he could put another twenty pounds on very easily. They liken him to like Mark Andrews was when, when Andrews was at Oklahoma, mm -hmm. young man at a, at a Desert Mountain High School, and Kyle Allen was his quarterback. How much he grew, how he got better at the position, and uh, over the years. So yeah, I wish nothing but the best for him. He could be. I'm just curious to see where they where they would pick him. After watching that big, that big of a young man, and where they would play him, would be a hybrid wide receiver, would be a true tight end, a little light as far as a true tight end, how they would utilize him. But that's pretty damn fast. And as all the times, the forty times this last week were just incredible. Some of these guys, Mike Evans just re-signed with Tampa Bay. Mike Evans is a six foot four, six foot five receiver, and wouldn't he have been the Johnny Wilson? when he was first coming into the NFL draft? Well, I think he was more of a true, true receiver. Okay. And Wilson, they use him in, in both it, situations. Both spots, yeah. yeah. and I think, you know, Evan, what's he going to make, like $24 million yeah, a year make the a next lot two of years? Money. Yeah. Good for Tampa to resign him. I think that was that was needed. But you get a guy like that, that that's long inside the 20-yard line, inside the 10. Throw the ball uh, up in the air. Exactly. That kind of – and can run like that. There's there's a lot you can do with a young man like that. Football 50's next. Got a bunch of stories, including Jason Kelsey decides to retire.